Hi everyone, it's MJ, the fellow actuary, and it is a crazy night here in South Africa because I've just learned that the oil prices have become negative. And this sucks for me because I was buying exchange traded notes on oil when it was at $30 back in March. So to see it go negative, it's something that I'm quite, I'm quite invested in. So why is this happening? Because I think a lot of us understand that there's the corona pandemic um, and Saudi Arabia and Russia had their little, their little fight. So we understood that there was a low demand for oil because of the pandemic. You know, planes aren't flying around as much. People aren't driving their cars due to lockdowns, uh, factories, you know, all, all production is down. So the demand for oil has, has gone down. But because of Russia and Saudi Arabia, uh, supply was actually increased a little bit um, until they had their emergency meeting and they were able to, to change that. But the big question is, okay, supply and demand, I mean, if you look at that curve, it very much has its axis at zero. You know, if, if there is unlimited um, supply and, and no demand, then prices should be zero. Why, Why are they going negative? And this is where finance with all of its wonderful tools, uh, derivatives and exchange traded notes and all these funny things that, that I like to play around with, this is where things can get a little bit ugly because look at somebody like me, okay? I have no use for large quantities of oil. So myself and a whole bunch of speculators around the world are trading the oil price. Um, and look, I'm, I'm a very small fish, but you get some hedge fund managers who are playing with millions, if not billions of dollars in this market. Now, one way you can do it is have an exchange traded note, which is a bit of a dummy share that a bank will normally set up. Um, and it, it's it's quite simple, it's, it's not too complicated, and it's been designed in such a way so that it doesn't have the traditional problems that futures and forwards have. So this is what the big guys are playing with are futures and forwards because the expenses on them are much lower than the exchange traded note. But the problem with your futures and your forwards is that you have to take delivery once the contract expires. And this is where speculators are absolutely freaking out because before, in normal market conditions, you just close out your trade if you want to get out early by taking the opposite uh, position. And you never actually take physical delivery of the asset. Um, you just kind of, if oil price goes out or if it goes down, you, you do the reverse trade, like I say, and you can close out your book. But now nobody wants to do the reverse trade because of all this craziness. And people are freaking out because they're going to be like, well, what am I going to do with barrels and barrels of oil? You know, oil is, I don't know if you guys, you guys have seen this stuff. It's quite murky. It's quite gross. Where are you going to store it? And it's because of the storage issue that oil prices have become negative because people don't want to take it on because they've got no way to store it. And the usual place where they would store it in these oil depots and things outside around the world, they've all filled up because like I said, oil prices were like at what, $65 around in January, they hit down into $30. This is when people like me who normally an index fund trader was like, ooh, let me have a go at speculating and buy some oil. And I think a whole bunch of other guys were also getting in and starting to buy oil because of course it was like 50% off, why not? And now, now it's uh, gone down even further and panic is hit because people don't want to hold onto oil because of the storage costs associated with it. It's kind of like with, uh, I remember like when we teach it at, at university, it's like with cattle. You can trade cattle prices, but you don't actually want to hold on to the cow because it needs to eat, it needs a place to sleep, it needs to do all these other things. Now, I don't know as much about oil, um, but I can imagine that there are quite some complexities when it comes to storing it. You can't just like put it in your house. Um, so it's because of the storage costs that oil has actually become negative. And this is, I don't think we will, I don't know, I don't want to say we'll never see this again in, in, in our lives, but it's it's crazy. Something that was purely theoretical, I remember reading about this in the textbooks on derivatives saying, you know, this could ever happen. And I was like, nah, that, that, that could never happen. But um, I mean, you, know, you look at, at interest rates on bonds and they've become negative, oil prices are negative. So yeah, it is, it is a crazy, crazy Monday night here in South Africa and I don't know what my exchange trader notes are going to be like in the morning. So um, yeah, it's going to be it's going to be a fun day of trading tomorrow. But anyway, that is a quick quick reason on why oil prices can become negative. It's because we no longer just 
trading, you know, buying and selling, we're doing derivatives and forward contracts where you're agreeing to buy something in the future. And normally you could cancel it out before delivery happens. But now because of the panic, no one wants to do that. And people are freaking about because once you take delivery of oil, what are you actually going to do with all this stuff? Anyway, that was just a quick update on how oil prices can become negative. Let's hope things return back to normal. Anyway, keep well. Cheers.